What is going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I did today, kicking off the July month on July 1st in 2019 in terms of my trades, as well as going over some other stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade here, heading on to the rest of this week here, starting off. July. But before we do get into the topics of today's video, all I ask from you guys out there is if you enjoy the content, simply leave a like on this video. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. And if you actually enjoy the content and you want to be a part of our Strive Smart community, there are two links down below, completely free. One of them being the Discord group chat and the other one being the Facebook group. I guarantee you guys will find a ton of value in those communities. You'll be able to talk to a bunch of different people over a thousand people in both of those communities combined so without out of the way with that out of the way let's just get right into it guys the S&P 500 today actually hit another all-time high here at 29.77 and 93 cents we saw a gap up this morning on the S&P if we look at this very quickly we saw that on Friday we actually closed on a nice bullish swing and that actually led into today's session with the gap up and that all-time high followed by a little pullback here in the S&P 500. The Dow Jones, a lot of the same, right? We ended up going up 117 points today, up 0.45%. At the close, we had that nice strong uh, the strong swing up here on Friday, literally right before the market closed, and that led into today with this big gap up. It was actually not an all-time high for the Dow Jones. It was about 100 points shy from that all-time high, but it did get very, very close today. Going over here to the NASDAQ, you guys can see it um, as well. You know, we hit a high at about 78 49 this morning and then we started to sell off and hit a low at about 77.59 and overall today guys the Nasdaq did very well it did the best out of the three major indexes considering that gap up that we saw this morning I believe it was up at one point like 2% maybe 2.2% while the other ones the S&P and the Dow they were up about 1.2 to about 1.5% and that has a lot to do with the tech stocks today doing significant significantly well compared to some of the other um, you know industries and sectors out there in the uh, stock market so that's what ended up happening on a very brief basis today in the markets going over here very quickly back to the S&P to start breaking down some technicals again we hit that all-time high today at about 29.77 me and a bunch of other of our group members today in the discord group chat we were seeing whether or not we were going to end up pulling back and holding that 2960 level that 2950 ish level which was actually a previous all-time high from the 21st of June we were wondering if we were going to hold this old resistance as a new support since we did gap up above it and you guys can see we hit the all-time high again like I said we pulled back and we successfully bounced on that old resistance as a new support right now for the S&P 500 and you guys can see it even better here on the OAP out to the five day five minute you guys can see it even better gap up pull back we hold that 50 SMA at a higher low in my opinion this is a very good sign that we're heading up um, you know we could potentially head up tomorrow in the markets as well if this actually gaps up and continues um, based on what the futures are going to be telling us we'll understand whether or not that's going to happen right let's say we see futures are up 0.4% tomorrow we're up here retesting that all time high you know we may be hitting another all-time high tomorrow, but let's say we're gapping down a bit. I'd be looking for that 50 SMA support there to see if we're going to hold above it or if we're going to sell below it, right? So going back over here, to the 20 day you guys can see we hit the higher high pulled back so everything pretty much is looking intact right now for the S&P 500 and in my in my opinion guys I definitely think we can hit a $3,000 S&P 500 at this point right if we go to that 20 day one hour chart very quickly you know all we need is another pop of about one to about 1.2 percent literally we've been having those moves I can count on 
on both of my hands, I feel like, over these past two, three, four, five weeks, um, that the S&P's literally gone up 1, 1.2% in the matter of a day. So all we need is another one of those strong days, and the S&P can definitely be at $3,000. Even if we see a little bit of a retracement of about, you know, 0.3, very similar to some of the, uh, of the retracements we've been seeing, you know, notice how a lot of these pullbacks are about 0.4, you know, 0.5%. You know, even if we see that and we hold that 50 SMA at that point, we'd need to pop, let's say, 1.5, 1.6%. And again, that can literally happen in one day or over the course of two, three days if we have like a couple mini green days, uh, if you guys know what I mean. So uh, 3,000 SMP, I think it's going to happen here, at least in the short term, especially if we get um, a rate cut here in the next 30 days. So that's the S&P right now, guys. A lot of the uh, other indexes, the Dow, the NASDAQ, they're looking very similar um, in terms of a technical basis. But the one little difference here is the Dow actually didn't pop to a higher high today. The high that it had back on the 21st of June is actually still higher. As you guys can see it here, we hit a high at about 26,907. So I'd say right now, pretty strong resistance on the Dow Jones at about 29,850 to about 20, or rather 26,850 to about 26,900. That's a pretty strong level. And ideally, guys, you know, I would like to see a break out of that level for the continuation of the uptrend for that higher high. And at that point, we'll be hitting all time highs there. And a good thing that I'm seeing here, guys, is that we're actually holding the 50 SMA support that's been a support over the past couple of weeks for the Dow. And that's a pretty good sign that it does want to continue its uptrend pattern here. So the de uh, the 10 day, 30 minute, you guys can see it again. Higher low was confirmed today as we did hit about 26,600. It was a higher low from 26,500. So that's a good sign on um, the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And you guys can see the reversal even better here on the five day, five minute. So that is um, kind of a breakdown on the Dow. We saw again that gap up, the cool off period, and the confirmation that we're still moving up on the smaller time frame charts, which again leads me to believe we may be continuing up here, guys, over these next couple of days here, at least on a technical basis, right? So the NASDAQ here, um, very similar. You know, we've been seeing a cool-off period. We held that 50 SMA nicely. We gapped up today, um, you know, uh, from the uh, over the past week, right? We gapped up today, and you guys can see it even better. Here on the 10-day, 30-minute, this is the gap up that you guys are seeing. From 77.20, we literally hit highs of about 78.49. That was a higher low, or rather a higher high. So the continuation of the uptrend was there. Going back to the 184-hour chart, we're actually very close, or we were rather, very close this morning to hitting an all-time high, but we got rejected by that all-time high roughly at about 78.75. So that right now um, is a level, in my opinion, that needs to be broken above, obviously, for an all-time high to be hit, for the uptrend to be continued, and for the confirmation that we're going to be um, continuing to push on this uptrend. But in my opinion, you know, this 50 SMA, we could be pull, uh, pulling back to it, maybe retesting it at about 7 7700 and from there you know if the market gets the good news from the rate cut you know if uh, tech stocks continue to do well you know at that point Nasdaq uh, the Nasdaq could uh, launch up from there uh, potentially hit an all-time high and maybe get into the $8,000 level guys so that's looking pretty good in my opinion and that's pretty much the market update for today's video so if you guys um, have any opinions you want to let me know your opinion let me know down below in the comment section what do you think right now about the stock market? In my opinion, I think the sentiment, again, is pretty positive right now. Rate cuts may be coming in soon. Again, that's a very short-term fix, short-term optimism. But I'm talking, you know, in the short term here, we may be going up. Longer term, if we're stretching this out, you know, a year, two years, it's a completely different story in terms of my opinion. But short term, I think we're going to continue um, to move up here based off of what I am seeing. So let's quickly do a trading update today, guys. And honestly, a lot of the stocks I talked about in yesterday's video, I kind of missed out on them because a lot of them already gapped up 
early this morning, and Baba was one of those actually that did very well. Uh, it, it went according to plan, but I completely missed it, you know, due to the gap up that we saw, right? If you really didn't get in this past Friday, you, you really couldn't have made um, a good amount of money here. You maybe could have made about a percent, 1.2 percent if you were to get in pre-market hours and sell at the top, but that's very, very uh, a small percentage of people there because that was such a quick move. You know, I don't know if anybody was able to catch that, but if you were able to get in um, on Friday, this one would have made out perfectly. You would have made, you know, four or five percent from a uh, entry point at about 168. And that's besides the point, right? This is one that I'm still going to be watching. But the one that I did end up trading today was you guys, guys. You guys today, if we go to the one day, one minute, and this is actually one that I called out on my Instagram. So if you guys don't follow my Instagram, shameless plug, first link down below in the description box. I'm starting to be extremely active on my story there. I'm going to be posting call outs on my Instagram. So go follow me down there. And this is actually one that I was able to call out. I don't know exactly what time I called it out, but I did call it out and uh, pretty much saying that this could be a reversal play, right? Because we saw how natural gas, let me just pull up my inverse ETF watch list very quickly. We saw how natural gas, if we pull up natural gas, where is it at? Here it is. We saw natural gas today. Again, we sold off. We've been selling off on natural gas on a more uh, broader perspective here. We sold off at 215. We popped up. We started to break out here, which was uh, a pretty bullish move, right? And then we saw the big dump actually um, earlier this morning. We saw the big dump from 230 down to about 221, which is actually a level of support from a previous resistance. And we actually held that level very nicely, um, you know, heading into about uh, the noon time here, Eastern Standard Time. And that's when we started to see a bit of uh, a bounce back play on natural gas. And notice how on the one day, one minute, we see the reversal play here. We see how the 50 SMA, the 180 SMA, they were acting as resistances. We got that bottom on the support at 220. We popped out bullish cross, you know, uh, the, the candlesticks were breaking out of the 50 SMA resistance. And this is when I started to see potential in you guys. And again, I'm not sure uh, what time I called it out exactly on my Instagram, but for those of you guys that do follow me on Instagram, you probably saw that, right? So we called this one out. I ended up getting in on you guys, you know, as we started to see that confirmation of that reversal on natural gas, which again was around 11 a.m., 12 p.m. Um, Eastern Standard Time. We broke out, we got the pullback, and this is actually when I started to build a position at about 1485, about 1490. We started to gap up again into the 15. 10 level, we pulled back. Once we bounced on that 50 SMA at a higher high, or rather a higher low, we started to trend back up. And this is actually where I started to cover some profits, heading more towards um, the pre-market resistance at about 1510 and that previous resistance that we just hit. So from about 1485-ish to about 1488 is where I started building my position up to where I sold off. It was about a 1.4 to about a 1.5% profit on you guys. And this one really played out um, very nicely, guys, because again, the dump that we saw today on natural gas happened very quick. So I was looking at it to see if we were going to end up um, seeing a bit of a recovery there, seeing a bit of a bounce back play there. And that's exactly what we ended up getting. So that's what I did today in terms of my trading, guys. Let me know down below in the comment section what you ended up doing. And a couple, honestly, that I'm going to be watching for these next couple of days. We saw in the beginning of this video, you know, Alibaba, this is one, again, Again, that I was not able to play. You know, if you weren't in it from Friday, you probably would have had a difficult time profiting on this. But this is one that I'm honestly going to be watching for potential pullback and a retest at about 173, which happens to be an old resistance, which is now a new support. And maybe even a pullback down to that 50 SMA. That could be an attractive spot for Alibaba um, to enter. 
You know, 3M is one that I didn't really play today either, but it's still on the watch list, and I want to see if it's going to hold 174 as a new support, which was an old resistance here. Maybe it pulls back down to the 50 SMA to retest that level. That could potentially be a nice entry point here on um, 3M. INTC was another one of those swing plays that I talked about here, and this actually is going to be an interesting entry point tomorrow, potentially for me. We got that that huge gap up today um, in the market. It seems like INTC followed that. We opened up at about 49.50. We dumped down and notice how we're actually holding that 50 SMA support here. That's been a support over the past couple of weeks. This is a good dip buy, potential dip buy on INTC heading into tomorrow. It can offer about a 2-3% profit You know, if we do end up getting back up to that $50 level of resistance. So those are three stops that I'm watching. You know, crude oil right now is in an interesting spot. We're actually getting hit by that uh, uh, $60 level of resistance. We got hit there, but we're also holding that 50 SMA. So keep an eye here on the 184 hour. This can be one that's trading between $57.75 and about $60. This could be a play to the upside tomorrow if we play UWT, which goes up whenever crude oil is going up. This could be a pretty solid one. You know, gold has actually been dumping pretty aggressively here over the past couple of days. We hit the high at 1440. We're dropping down to about 1390 here. It's a bit oversold. So let's see, you know, if this starts to possibly pop back up here. But if kind of, um, it feels kind of weird because since the markets have been seeing a bit more optimism, gold has slowly been starting to dump. So that has to be some kind of correlation there. So I'm not not sure, um, you know, how this is going to play out. You know, if we get the rate cut, market shoot up to a 3,000 S&P, uh, a 20, maybe a, a new all-time high on the Dow, maybe a new all-time high on the NASDAQ, this can trickle down gold um, a bit more. That can definitely happen. So I'm being a bit careful there, but I'm still watching it. And of course, you guys know the market ETFs, you know, TQQQ, SQQQ, TVIX, all of these volatility and market ETFs that trade on the S&P, the NASDAQ, I'm always watching those. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. I'm going to wrap it up here. If you did, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. It really does support me again, and I really appreciate every single one of you guys out there doing that. If you want to talk to me, um, drop a comment down below. Let's talk. If you want to send me a DM, you can do that on Instagram, Discord. We can talk about stuff there as well. And if you guys want to be further connected with our communities, all the links are down below. And don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification bell. I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Peace out. What is going on, everybody? 